Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Snobobo, and today I'm going to be showing you the best routes and strategies for the Sparrow Racing League map, Campus Martius on Mars. Now before we get into that, you might be asking yourself, why should I trust you? What gives you the right to give me strategies, and what route to take? Which is a very understandable question to be asking. Well, while using this route, I have never gotten below second, and the only reason I've gotten second is due to me crashing because I couldn't execute it properly. And at the time of making this video, out of 818,000 Guardians on PlayStation who have played SRL, I am ranked number 317 globally. So hopefully that gives you enough confidence to trust what I'm about to tell you, so we'll just get right into it. So before kicking off the footage, I should mention that it comes without question to hit every single boost gate unless I say so within the video. Just wanted to clear that up in case. At the very first jump after the starting line, you can either go around to the right or do a little leap over the top. As you will find with most of the obstacles in the races, it is better to stay on the ground when you are able to. Going around the little jump in this case is the better option, even though it only saves you about half a second. After hitting those two boost gates after the jump, get just a couple feet away from the left wall to set up for the next turn. The strategy for this turn is to turn just a little bit before the turn actually starts. Since your sparrow glides a little bit, this will compensate for that gliding and keep you as tight to the wall as it will allow you. Once you're at the halfway point of the turn, slightly release the left thumbstick so that you start gliding a little more to the right. This will make it easier to hit the boost gate. When you're going through this boost gate, use your lateral left movement on your sparrow. It's going to equalize the turning momentum and where you want to go, which is straight. Now we get to the main area that I like to call the duck or jump. This obstacle took way too long to figure out what was the fastest, and for the longest time, I myself went on top to jump. Some go over, some go under, and some use the first boost and then go over. I then realized that if you go underneath and take the straightest route possible through the turns, and then lateral right when you hit the boost gate on the other side, it is considerably faster. Just make sure you keep as straight as possible when going through the tunnel, and have your camera move towards the cliff using the right thumbstick when you use your lateral right movement on the other side. For the second boost gate after dropping down off the cliff, just use that lateral right movement that I talked about. This will let you miss the rock that makes you jump in the air and keep you on the ground which makes you go faster. For the left turn right after the mini gap, just make sure you start turning left before you actually hit the gate. This will make it so you don't go flying to the right wall and you'll pretty much hug the left wall all the way down. Just use a lateral left movement if you've gone too far to the right and that'll make you hit the gate. After taking the big jump down, make sure you're on the right side of this boost gate. You're going to boost on the inner left side of the obstacle in the middle. This will make it so you can get a tight turn and hit the next boost gate as well, since your throw glides quite far. For the boost gate right before the big jump, use your strafe right if you would like. It gives you just a tiny boost. For the three rotating fans, there's really no right or wrong way to do it, but the best strategy that I use is to aim directly for a blade since it rotates fast enough so that you won't hit it. It sounds ridiculous to aim for something that you're trying to avoid, but it works. For the final turn in the race, just use the strategy that I've told you before in the race. Start turning and gliding your sparrow before you actually hit the turn. This will make it so you can go on the bottom side of the jump and still hit the boost gate. Now, if you're able to hit all the rest of the boost gates until the end, you're pretty much home free. Just one last thing, if you have the Taken version of the race, watch out for the Taken Centurion who throws orbs at your face because he will throw you at a wall. Trust me. He will. If you have the skill required to repeat that three times in a single race, you'll get an incredible time and almost be guaranteed your win. Last strategy, if you see me in an SRL race going against you, the best strategy I can tell you is to go and hit a wall. This will give you the best chance of losing, and for me to win. An infinite descent guide should be out pretty soon, but as of right now, I'm going to go work on my times, trying to beat them, and move up in the leaderboards. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed, and as always, I'll talk to you again very soon.